I have been watching a lot of wrestling lately in preparation for the show, and there is a lot of wrestling to watch. And I give you guys props because you guys get ratings I couldn't get if I had Monica Lewinsky and the Pope on this show. <laughs> <laughs> so... Well, thank you. <laughs> Absolutely. But my first question is, the audience, your audience, they're in on the joke, right? So is your audience. So is your audience. So is your audience, man. <laughs> yeah, but... <laughs> Come on. Oh, no, I mean, I want to have this frank discussion. But, we, you know, this show, politically incorrect, means we never tell a lie. That's, I tell every guest that. I don't care what you have to say. You don't have to be funny. You don't have to be anything except honest. But there isn't we're, really no, a joke. I mean, it's not yeah. a joke. We're, we're a target. We're already yeah. a joke. Yeah. Come on. Are you calling no, no, when I say in on the Throw joke. No, what joke? Tell us what's the joke. No, no, no. What joke? I did. So what, what you're trying joke? to say is... <laughs> okay. Define. Which, okay. When I say in on the joke, I mean that people know that you're not really beating each other up. Okay, that, let's just... We got oh, a long... Yeah, you'll okay, stop right there. 30-minute show? Yeah, <laughs> yeah, at least. Show. yeah, yeah. Well, I know everybody but, for come a on. long time. Let's be Let's real. Wait a second, but you, you consider that a joke, do you? No, no, it's a phrase. In on the joke means that you know that you're watching it with a sense of irony. I think in the old days they watched wrestling in a different way. I think today's audience watches wrestling and they are in on the joke. That's not an insult. So what you're trying to say is what, I mean, people I are just dying way. for this. I take it as an insult, too. I do, too. I mean, but they're so... dying to find out, hey, okay. wrestling's right, then fake. You, hey, we're, no. we're, then the you're only telling thing me that you're really is... hitting each other? No. no. Oh. The sound of the chair is real, okay? We are entertainment, but when a metal chair cracks your back, that's not fake. You know, that somebody throws you from... It's a yes, metal chair. Yes, I, you know what? There's so... never a bruise no, no, no. on any of you. Bologna, you got a minute? Look at that. No. See that wrist? Seven years it's been broken. Owen Hart, dead. Why don't you go tell Mrs. Hart what a joke it is, huh? Nate's watching hell in a cell. Boom, bang, boom, hell in a cell. Nate's watching hell in a cell. Baby, on the blow. That's just uh, an outright lie. You're just starting what? the episode with a huge lie. I ain't no. watching no hell in a cell. We had an Instagram last night that said you were live tweeting yeah, the entire show. I didn't get to check on fake. that. Who's... You didn't do it? Nowhere near Instagram last oh. night. Leading people astray again. Yeah. No, not really. Uh, I think I made it clear with the final hashtag of that post. Nate hates wrestling. I did see the, the hell on the cell is painted fire engine red now. There's oh, a lot yeah. of people on the internet upset about that? Uh, question mark? Doesn't really matter. Uh, a lot of complaints out there. There's only like a few times where I felt like it made it hard to see. No, I could see that. I but, feel like they're just uh, a little couple years too late on that, trying to ride the coattails of that Bound for Glory uh, enclosed red cage that uh, Homicide didn't have enough upper body strength to climb himself out of. Uh, we were just talking about that the other night, we weren't were, we? were, absolutely, and here we go. Homicide just... just like uh, <sighs> WWF had tapped right into Homicide what can't we were do thinking. a pull-up, I guess. Nope, that's why he'll or, never make it in the E. Or at least not after 20 minutes of wrestling, he can't. I probably wouldn't be able to either, quite frankly. But it was like a spot fest. Like, it's not like he was working for 20 minutes. He'd, like, do something, take a powder. I'd, yeah, it's do something, take a powder. That'd be my M.O. I'd be one of those guys who always had a fork in his pants. Once in a while, I'd pull it out and just, like, yeah. act like I was poking it in people's foreheads. Yeah. That would kill, like, a good five minutes. Oh, hell yeah. That's a good bit. Take another powder, jaw with the people in the front row for a while. Oh, yeah. I wouldn't even need cardio if I was a pro wrestler. I tell you what, we don't take any powders on this show because it's baby oil and blow. Take well, maybe one powder before powder. the show. Yeah, there's, there's powder we take. Jacked up yeah. to be fire on that mic, ah, son. Yeah.
Coming at you. Last days of summer. It's me, the Dog big days. old baby. Her, her. With me, as always, you can be, well, since you want to do the bark, you can be uh, Titus O'Neill to oh, my good. Apollo Cruz. You are Nate Adams. Ahoy, ahoy, everybody. Oh. I gotta say, last days of summer, but I poked my head outside just once today. Yeah. Just once really quickly, and I was like, it's still too hot. That's like, why I'm not I, going out there. That's why I got this bitchin' GNR shirt with the sleeves cut off. Yeah, that's one way to do it. Other way, just don't leave your house all day. And my AC in my car decided to quit working like Friday. Oh, you're living like poor people now. Yeah. I can't even imagine what that would be like. Yeah, so I dressed accordingly for the two-minute drive to your house. Probably just drive my car off the edge of the Thornton Quarry and give up on it. <laughs> Uh, we got a lot of stuff to talk about. I mean, there's so much going on in current wrestling. World we got to go over your, uh, what you thought about Hell in a Cell. I already did. I heard that the cell was red. Okay. Not Those a are your fan. thoughts there. Today, kind of a double-edged sword for... Today's Elvira's for, birthday. Well, there's a couple I'm other things, too. On Monday. It's uh, Jimmy Cornette's birthday. Jim Cornette and Elvira share a birthday. Huh? And it's the one-year anniversary of the brain's passing. Oh, a very happy birthday to uh, all those living and undead, and a very solemn uh, go fuck yourself to everybody who just died on us, crept yeah. out and died and gave up. I don't think we don't need you. I don't think the brain really gave up. Yeah, like, that's how it works. He was like missing his people, mouth for years. Like people that, either sounds like he kind of they're around. fighters and they're heroes, or they they lose their fight with illness, and in that that sense, they're a coward. That's huh. just how the world works. Hmm. I didn't make the rules. I'm just following them. Is it Vince McMahon's rules? Just, yeah. Is he going to bury that Connor kid once he finds... Oh, I think he did die. Oh, yeah. That kid's definitely oh, yeah. dead. There yeah. he flung his corpse into a pile or whatever. I'm sure they got like oh. a whole pile of cancer kids over there in the WWE now. Oh. They're cycling through them. Oh, Jesus. Oh, what are they keeping in the warehouse there? I don't know. I saw they had Next one... Next to the original blue bar They had cage. one fat one coming out on Raw the other day. He seemed like a real little badass because he just had uh, that Susan G. Komen, you know, pink ribbon yeah. breast cancer shirt with just the pink ribbon circled and crossed out. I was like, hell yeah, little chubby little really? cancer survivor. You're making some political statements there. Damn. Sticking it to Stephanie McMahon right in her craw. That's pretty... Wow. So That's shout out to that kid, whoever statement. I saw, shared on social media. Like I said, this is how things work. People people share things on social media. That's how you promote You your don't shit. watch anything these days. You just figure it all out on social people, media. Well, you don't have to watch anything. Because if you something gonna... happens, people are going to complain about it on social media. But you are going to watch the Emmys later. <laughs> they still do those? Yeah. How many is uh, WWF one for Raw at this point? 72, I would assume. That makes a lot of sense. They uh, do a lot of good work over there. Netflix... Has led the way with like a hundred nominations this year, mm, or something stupid have like they that. They made anything good. That's my point. I guess people like Glow, okay. Yeah, but but that's nothing special. That show for every it's one or two special. halfway decent things that Netflix churns out, there's literally three hundred oh, other yeah, things that are garbage. just unwatchable, just pure garbage. And also, this is like it just essentially gets thrown into a pile and forgotten about on that yeah. Netflix interface. Like, uh, who can ever keep track of God. what's on there? Or... Shame on all you who are still Netflixing and chill. Like, don't mm-hmm. like no. Give me Hulu if mm-hmm. you're gonna like actually watch TV or something like that. Uh, other than that, you know, you can just watch movies. You can order a service on whatever your tastes are. Like Shutter. Yeah classic we Netflix love the shutters dvd in the mail that's yeah. what i'm talking about right send me some russ corman just like uh just trash just roger corman rather russ yeah. meyer yeah <laughs> we've got those two guys combined into one guy what are you either way made a lot of trashy movies big boobied women what are you, you can all? get them all sent to you on dvd through that classic netflix in the mail service Every time I... There's a lot of trash on Amazon Prime streaming, too. Yeah, that's cool. Like Get yourself pure, Amazon. Get dirty, that. Dirty, gross... Oh, yeah. 70s, Sexploitation shit. Yeah. Oh, I love all that shit. If they got the cheerleaders, I gotta find out. That's one of my favorites, man. Oh, they got all sorts of It's like of 76, 78. Both Big Bad Mama movies. So. Oh, man. Slim Pickens over on Netflix if you want anything that's not like uh, straight-to-video crap from two years ago. Is it too late for us to reboot this show or too early for us to reboot it's this show? It's probably just about time. Where we just cover 70s sexploitation films and yeah, review them? I mean, we could keep the name. going to be 
a lot less effort, I think, watching one of those every week than yeah. it is watching one of these fucking episodes of pro wrestling. Well, I'd say... Quite a, frankly. You know, we're watching two or three of those just, movies anyways yeah, a week. It's just it's, whittled me down to nothing. Yeah. Well, you... Wrote it down to a little stub of a man at this point, uh, sitting through this pro wrestling. I'm going to use that little segue there, because that's great setup for uh, what we just went through mm-hmm. over this... Wondrous warm weekend. It's time to do a rundown of what we went through. Is that what we're saying? Uh, yeah. Uh, phew. live through this. Okay. Uh, rundown. Shows live through this. This week it was supposed to be brought to us by new film in theaters, The Predator, uh, directed by Shane Black, co-written by Fred Decker, the man who he co-wrote the Monster Squad with. Great little team. Did a lot of great stuff in the '80s. I saw it last night, and it's a shit show. Oh, no. It's a real fucking shit show. It's like oh. three or four movies they try to cobble together into one movie, and it's just a big mess, <laughs> and it makes no sense, and <laughs> just plot holes everywhere. It makes no sense how characters get from place A to place B, or Do they, like, use they any have of that information music? they're not supposed to have, and there's clearly just all sorts of essential scenes cut out. And Do they use any of that music, though? No. There's it's because that pedophile was in all those important scenes, and they no. had to cut those. You can't show pedophiles on TV. You know, Amanda, you know what I'm saying. 200. Oh, yeah. Unless it's to catch a predator. She's like sneaking in and out. She's getting very good at this these days. Um, So instead of that, um, I threw their money in the toilet and flushed it. I'm not going to accept it. You don't take no pedo money. We're not going to promote the predator because it sucks. It's a bad product. Instead, we're going to promote classic Fred Decker movie, Night of the Creeps, Underseen. You want a movie about space aliens coming and wreaking havoc? 1986, Night of the Creeps. Space slugs getting people's brains, turn them into killers. The night of the formal is finally here for Chris, Cindy, and JC. It's going to be the best night of their lives. But tonight is also the night of the creeps. From a world unknown comes a nightmare unimagined. First, they are under you, around you, on you. And then, inside you. And get in through your mouth, and you walk around while they incubate, even if you're dead. They are a new breed of terror. Wait! They are a different kind of horror. Zombies, exploding heads, creepy crawlies. We could have a little problem. The creeps are taking over. Good news and bad news, girl. The good news is your dates are here. What's the bad news? They're dead. You have never had a night like this. <coughs> night of the creeps. If you scream, you're dead. And then also, I'm going to shout out a little love to Shane Black's The Nice Guys from a couple years ago. Yeah. Maybe one of the most purely entertaining action films of the, the last, last 10, ten years. years yeah. Not enough people went to see it. Munich. What? A guy without his balls. It's Munich. Munich is a city in Germany. München, Munich. Yeah. Right. Hitler only had one ball. Also, so uh, don't go see The Predator this weekend. Just stay home and watch Night of the Creeps and also The Nice Guys. And if you're really in the mood for a 80s night of horror fest, uh-huh. throw Night of the Comet in there, too. Oh, Night of the Love Comet that has one. got some sexy 80s Love bitches that in one. it. Good stuff. So this rundown brought to us by all but that good stuff. But break it down! Is... <laughs> what are we... <laughs> I thought it'd be cool if we used like the now? DX music when we okay. do the rundown. World Championship Wrestling. <laughs> Suck it. Uh, yeah. April 2nd, 1988. Uh, turn it up. Yeah. yeah. First match. Uh. We got the Fantastics in there versus Alan Martin and Keith Steinborn. Fantastics win with the Fantastic Rocket Launcher. Sting is in our second match versus our boy Big Bear Collie. Oh, Big the Sting? Strapping lad. All Sting splashing the scorpion. You know how that goes. Next match, the Sheep Herders in there versus Rocky King and Larry Stevens. Sheep Herders win it with their double gut buster. Double A, Arn Anderson out there to prove a point versus a man named Art Pritz. Art 
Pritz. More on that later. Double A wins with a spine buster. That's a tease. Road Warriors versus Joe Cruz and the Luchador El Negro. Um, I looked down just to type their names. And yeah. And when I looked up, the match was, was already over. Yeah. Which is Road a Warriors shame. win it. El Negro is one of the highest flyers of the highest flyers, you know? Yeah, just, I caught him hitting the ground, so I guess he must have flew at some point. Not high enough, man. Ronnie Garvin and Jimmy Garvin, uh, the brother duo in there versus Ryan Wagner and Steve Atkinson. Jimmy gets the pin with a pretty decent-looking brain buster. Yeah. Probably the best thing I've ever seen Jimmy Garvin do. Al Perez, that Latino Lothario in there versus high-flying old man out of control Mike Jackson. Uh, Regrettably, Perez takes the win with his spinning toehold. The Midnight Express in there versus Tony Suber and Trent Knight. The Midnight's win with the real rocket launcher. Oh, I'm already lost in my notes. Oh, we're still going. Varsity I know, Club. I can't keep All up. three of them. They're in there versus Bob Rowe, George know. South, and Larry Davis. Not Larry know. David. That would be hilarious, but it didn't happen. Larry Davis. Uh, pretty sure. I don't know. Sullivan got the win somehow. This is the second match yeah. I tapped out in for the night. Just oh, stopped wow. complaining to it completely. Ooh. Had a second win, came back, tapped out a second time. Wow. This uh, show really, really did me in. Took a lot out of you. Finally, finally the last match. Ivan Koloff versus Curtis. Kurt, Curtis? I guess I wrote Curtin, but that makes no sense. Yeah, no, it's Curtin. Curtin is not a man's name. No, he's like a, he's like a mafia oh, guy. It's Curtin's for you. You okay. see, Curtin's. <laughs> Decent gimmick. He used to kill everybody. Yeah, it didn't get him too far, though. Koloff uh, wins with the sickle. Uh, Pretty quick. Uh, when did you watch this? Friday, Saturday, Saturday? I watched this Friday night. Uh, okay. It's been a while now. It's been a few days. It's not fresh in my memory, right. but looking back at these notes, it's uh, it's a new fresh hell, remembering what I put myself through. Did you get as drunk as I did Saturday? Mm, I don't think so. Oh, okay, all right. I got standard drunk, I feel like. Oh, man, I was drinking out in the sun all day. Yeah. Drinking beers all day. Uh-huh, I was just at work all day. Took an hour to drink two bottles of water oh, yeah, and then met right. you at the you bar. You did show up yeah. already, kind of, uh... Oh. In a mood. Yeah, I was ready to party, bro. Actually, it was sandwiched between you and fall off the stool drunk Molly. I kind of felt really sober on Saturday night. Yeah. For a change. I'm sure I got toasted by the end, by the end of the by night. By the end, we seemed like... I'm sure, uh, I hit a nice level. A couple of charming individuals, you know? Yeah. And then the I next couldn't, day... I couldn't get that uh, after bar chili. That's how drunk I oh, was. Oh, wow. That's, that's a tragedy. Yeah. Next day, I just sweated all that stuff out and did good. Yeah? Just, yeah, you know. I just, slept, gotta, I just slept till two. Just got to come back at it. Just got to yeah. get back up and get back out there and do it. <sighs> you're a real motivation to us all, man. I got to say, not you're really. The, no, you're the John Cena Today, of living. I've done nothing but nap, quite frankly. I was up all night last night. This is your cheat day. Just tossing and turning, tossing and turning. Yeah. I finally made about like 10 o'clock this morning. I like dozed off, yeah. I guess. Because at 10.30, the house frau comes. She's knocking on my window. That's weird. I'm like, what's going on with this? So I go, and I'm like, what the fuck are you doing? And she's like, oh, I locked my keys in my car like a dum-dum. Mm. I need you to let me in the house. Yeah. I was like, great day you picked to knock on my window yeah. and wake me up a half an hour after I fucking fell uh, asleep. I had a bad sleep. I've done night. nothing. It's like the afternoon. I've done fucking nothing. I had a bad sleeping night as well. I this is just a terrible, terrible day for us. Weird, uh, like... I wasn't really awake, but I was like kind of asleep, oh, and then yeah. I hear things, uh-huh. and it was like, nope, that was in my head. Was that a some spooky false door reality. creak? Yeah, like uh, was the chains rattling? I heard weird vibrations, and then I heard a baby laughing, and then it was Ooh. like. Uh, You're having some train spotting esque withdrawal symptoms. Yeah, right? yeah. Anytime like I have like weird like can't sleep right things, I go like hard into like hearing like creepy shit. That doesn't make sense. That's a little bit spookifying. Uh, but enough about that. Let's get into what wasn't weird. It was just boring. All right. And yeah. that is this episode. Or we could just skip it. I mean, I'm yeah, quite frankly, probably I'm fall asleep it'd be anyways. more, and more uh, entertaining talking about other shit. But. Um, number one. What's your number one in this? I'm five going count? to Flair. All the way to Flair. You got That's, anything before that? I don't Let even me know. know when that was. Uh, do you know how long my notes are for these 14 matches? Not just do long. it, and we won't keep it in order, or we will keep it in order. Yeah, all right. Let's see how it hashes out. So here's Flair. He comes out. He's cutting a promo. He. he it's a great cocky Flair heel promo where he beat 
Sting on a technicality. Uh, this is coming back to me now. Yeah, they went 45 minutes. They went the distance. And uh, none of that shit really matters because we all know that Flair's a great wrestler. And we all know that Flair's mm-hmm. a great talker. The real important part of this segment yep. was when he brought out his dick pills with him. So is that what I was led to believe that this was? Because I thought he was just popping trucker speed. I, hard to say. Hard yeah. to say. I think this is a little bit before the invention of dick pills. So my guess was just... The prescription bottle that he, he had, pulled out and started popping pills in his mouth out of? He had what was called Formula One and Formula Two, okay. I think is what it was described I actually, as. I rewound it a little bit because I yeah. was like, did I miss him telling us what this is or why he's doing it? Or did he just flat out apropos enough and start popping pills on live television? I think so. So he comes out with the bottle and he's talking to fucking Davy Crockett, bragging about Lucky. how he's the All Night Express. And he's like, you know, it was fucking clashing. The 60 champions. minutes with Sting at that class. He's like, everybody's like 45 minutes pissing sorry. their pants because it's a big night. You know what he did the night before? He fucked so five five different women, I think. He five said. women? Yeah. I think he said five women. Yeah, you're going to probably need a nice speedball, a trucker speed, and dick pill. Yeah, to Flair, I got it in my notes. Flair doing drugs and five women all night. And uh, then shows up to the fucking Greensboro, Green Hill, Green whatever, mm-hmm. Coliseum. Mm-hmm. And uh, goes 45 minutes the limit with Sting because he can. What a guy. And then... And it'll never catch up with me. He does want to live forever. Forever. You hear me, baby Jesus? My dad will never die. Uh, He eats one of these pills... Mm-hmm. on screen but yeah. instead of just like swallowing it he's like i'm gonna chew it up yeah uh-huh. and it looks like one of those like giant 500 milligram Dude's fucking popping horse chalky pills. like aspirins like he's which, out of his mind which wouldn't be a problem except for the fact that like flair always gets cotton mouth That's in his promos very true a little spittle build up in the so, corners of his mouth it was really hard like trying to watch like a senior citizen eat like an early bird special like doing that whole like yeah. chewing on nothing it for was like a half 10 minutes. as gross as that picture from his wedding everybody's passing around oh, this week him where him and his kissing wife Fifi. just have their tongues down each other's throats. That's awesome, Full though. Full view, tongues everywhere. You know he's doing weird butt stuff you, like, to her still to this day. I think like four different people have sent me that picture. I'm just yeah. like, I just got over my nausea from the last time yeah. I saw it. Quit sending me this picture, people. Like, you know they're doing weird sex uh, stuff he's together. He's just so leathery and creepy looking at this oh, point. He's man. just this little wrinkled up creature. Yeah, yeah, and it's just his sure growth is. lizard tongue. He kind of yeah squirming around. He kind of looks from the profile a little bit like a Tyrannosaurus Rex. Mm, I can see that for kinda sure. Kind of looks like yeah. uh, fucking uh, Dennis Hopper. I was just in, gonna uh, Super Mario. Just gonna Brothers. put it in that direction. Yeah. He's not quite a Goomba, but once yeah. Dennis Hopper transitions into Bowser towards yeah. the end of that fucking weird movie. Do you know what I love about mud? It's clean and it's dirty at the same time. <laughs> so yeah, anyways, we watched Flair eat a pill for five minutes. That was one of my points, too, because I was fucking shocked once he just started popping pills. And then when his promo was yeah. over, he tossed the whole bottle to Davy Crockett. Because so. he said he's talked to some yeah. women, and they've all said he needs those. That guy's gonna, you know, he's gonna be out there hanging and banging all night but in the hotel then, bars. to make matters worse... Shivani piles in on him. Mm. And he's like, yeah, yeah, you need those pills, Dave. Have fun with those pills, Dave. And it's like, Shivani, who are you, man? You Shivani, couldn't even... Pretty infamous for getting plastered with the horseman back in this period. Yeah, I guess I so. think probably he's... Uh... He's, he's looking a little runoff. chunky in this episode, too, I was noticing. Yeah. I was like, this must be that like the height of him, up. like following around the horseman all night. He's... Got the little double chin going. Yeah, I'll his, hang out with you guys. His suit coat totally buttoning in the front. Like, yeah. Just, ugh, this, yeah, I'll have sex with that fat girl. Pretty bloated, Shivani. Maybe uh, you need to go home early with old Davy Crockett. Just a couple nights a week. Um, just backing up a little bit. Okay. Another one of my points okay. is just uh, okay. that Fantastics match during it. Yeah. I loved how much they were putting over... How out of control the hatred between the Fantastics and the Midnight Express are, and how they're so heated and they're so crazy after their big brawl yeah. to clash with champions that it might ruin the entire Crockett Cup. This big oh, tag team no. tournament we got going up. How are these teams going to be able to 
in this straight up just sporting event, Hell just uh, no. this gentleman's event, this tournament. This blood feud's going on right in the middle of it. It might tear the entire uh, tournament apart. And for the first time, there's a million after bucks on the line. Them talking bro. about it for I don't know a couple months at this point. I'm a little bit intrigued to see what goes on in the Crockett Cup. But finally, not, but not enough, and not enough. And yeah. I doubt it's going to be televised. Yeah. So it'll probably just be talked about forever, and then yeah. we won't even see it play we out. We won't even know if it is passed. That was generally how their weirdo business model was working at this point. They hadn't quite figured out they were a television company yet. Oh, speaking of like weird, stupid WCW mm-hmm. championships that don't matter. I was speaking about that, yeah. I want to give a, a shout out to our friends, uh, Mempho Brand Tees out of Memphis, Tennessee. Oh, okay. They're selling a cross promotion here. A bull of the woods t shirt. Oh, that's that shirt you wanted. Uh, now you've yeah. got an outlet. To I wanted get the belt buckle, but yeah, I'll I'll settle on a fucking shirt, man. Yeah, well, maybe get Just like to let a people Kickstarter know. going for somebody to start pressing those belt buckles. Oh man, get enough people that's, signed on. They want a bull of the woods belt buckle. Yeah, you're gonna have to get a what, like a pewter smith, somebody that works mm. with fine metals. Yeah, I'll start traveling around to all the local Renaissance fairs. I'll find somebody. You'd think, but I couldn't find that fucking Scotty Steiner, or the Rick, Scott Steiner headgear anywhere, man. You, we finally found it towards the end of the day, but it Did took we? a scouring of that entire Renaissance Fair, and then you decided, like, hey, I'm just gonna buy the thirty-one or the thirty-dollar right, one on yeah. Amazon instead of buying this like two hundred-dollar one here at yeah. this Renaissance Fair. Yeah, all y'all, either way, sure. by next year we're gonna have yeah. Scott Steiner headdresses. Tune in, so. yeah, it's gonna be great. No big whoop. My number two, and this is just a quick. Uh, Good job. Uh huh. Congratulations. A little tool time. Salute to uh, who this year? Salute or this this week <laughs> to the sheep herders. <laughs> to the sheep herders. Okay. Uh, they had a tag match. Cone Johnny Ace. That wasn't fifty minutes of them beating people up for no reason. Oh, okay. It was a uh, pretty quick to the point. They even let Rocky King get over a minute of offense to start the match, and then they took Rocky over King, it. King, he's got potential. Uh, One of these days. Larry Stevens got in the ring, kind of did a thing for 30 seconds. They quickly See, cut that is, off. This is the first match that I tapped out in, yeah. if I it, remember correctly. It wasn't good. I stopped paying attention to it sure. pretty quickly on. I think that was more my fault than what right. was actually going on in the ring. Yeah. I think I just didn't want to be watching wrestling on a Friday night. Uh, here's the problem. And, and the really bad ones, you don't fall asleep in. It's the ones that are... Okay. Yeah, right there in the if middle. If they're passable, like... Yeah, this is wrestling. That There's something edge. about it that just kind of like lulls you into mm, like this. Certainly this does sense of just like the comfortable, like squeaks of the ring, uh, uh, yeah, the like, shrieks uh, of the hillbilly and the fans, uh, uh, all just meld into uh, a gentle soundscape uh, uh, wrestling, uh, wrestling, of sleazy, uh, weird shit from the '80s. And then the interview happened, Me. and they were like, "Whoa!" Because yeah. that's how they talk. See, I did uh, when the interview was happening. There's a nice little juxtaposition. Of this interview, where they're screaming everything like morons, and the interview we saw last week from 1993 yeah. on that smack and whack, where they, they the were also room. screaming everything. But uh, this one much better because even though the delivery is actually the same, they're like screaming mean stuff about how much they hate everybody instead of just yeah. screaming like, "Oh, cousin Luke! Oh, the little kids love us so much!" Yeah, and it's just like sheep herders as bad guys. So much better as than bushwhackers as just like friend to children yeah. comedy good guys. Bushwhackers so much better. come across as like that handicapped relative that like may mm-hmm. or may not have touched mm-hmm. one of the young cousins, mm-hmm. and it's like oh, sheep dude, herders are more like do? that methed out relative who that you did know, touch one of the cousins you know. and had to go away to jail for it yeah. for a couple of years. Yeah, and for me, that's just a much more effective wrestling character. Yeah, I like my shit black and white. You know, like the stripes that they're wearing in the Huskow. Uh huh. So I'm up to a number three here. What was your number two? It was what I was oh, talking the, yeah, about with yeah. uh, that last one. Mm. We were both going to do flair, so, so that takes care of one of mine. Yeah, we can't even My number flare. three, I just wrote, Hey, Matt, your Prince of Darkness match is still happening. Yeah. Remember a couple weeks ago, we were so worried <laughs> yeah, that's that that Prince of Darkness match was supposed <laughs> to be at the Clash and it got canceled? Yeah. yeah. Not they're talking about that again. It's coming back. And I got a little two-parter to this one because, oh. A, I was very happy to hear the Prince of Darkness match still upcoming. The Jimmy Gavin versus Jimmy uh, Gavin, our boy Kevin Sullivan in the Prince of Darkness match, and then they talked about it twice. 
And uh, Tony Schiavone really stepping up to the plate, I thought, later on when they were starting to talk about it during that uh, varsity club match. Reese said, yeah. my question is, what is a Prince of Darkness match? Ooh. And I was like, good fucking question, yeah. Tony. And then JR responded, I'm sure we'll be addressing that at some point in the future. And I was like, fuck you, You know JR. what, JR? That's a I don't bold think so. Lie. Yeah, I don't have much faith that that's the case. Tony Schiavone yeah. asking the real question. I got a number three, and it's uh, my guy Art Pritz versus Arn Anderson. Okay. I'm going to get the business out of the way okay. here. You ready? I'm going to get the business out of I'm, the way. I'm talking about this one, too. Arn Anderson does a great job. Mm-hmm. He's coming off of a loss. He looks yes. pissed off. Reestablished he that beats the fuck. not going to happen yeah. again. There's not going to be another loss. I'm still double A. He beats the fuck out of Art Pritz. Throws him to the outside, punching his head against the concrete, which is just a good look. Felt a little bad Throws him Mr. back Pritz. in, just ends it quickly. He's like, I'm just done. And then, like, Dave Crockett. I didn't like the fucking set of marbles on Crockett in this episode. He kept trying to call people out. He was. Uh, and then it was, like, no-selling when people were being healed. Basking in the glory of being uh, friends with the wrestlers too much on camera yeah. in this episode. Like, it's something he always does yeah. but it's usually he's really usually does it more to it. the good guys like yeah. yeah this this week it was clearly like he forgot that like he's supposed to not like the you gotta heels put over like, heels, oh that's pal. my buddy Art Anderson <laughs> yeah you made fun of me but you're just he's a real goof. cool he you're lets me talk goof. to him sometimes after the show yeah. and he's like oh <laughs> he's like even like fucking like teasing him like oh boo hoo like you lose oh you mm-hmm. mad you mad mm-hmm. come at me bro he slap the taste out of that fucker's mouth and Arn Dusty like, did it last week right? and nothing happened to him Arn matter of factly is just like i ain't mad bro i'm intense that's what this fucking look is i'm coming yeah. back for my belt the kids these days they call it butt hurt yeah he Arne wasn't Anderson's coming in their butt he hurt. wasn't he's like i'm intense dude he's like i, I i'm not gonna make an excuse i mm-hmm. lost mm-hmm. we lost all right but we won 365 days out of the year yep. one loss one loss does not erase let's see all you those do wins. it motherfucker still the horseman Getting ready to Still get our belts best. back. It was a real intense, really just like uh, awesome classic double A promo that I could not take remotely seriously because why was Arn Anderson's hair so blonde? Yeah, that was weird. Is what it is like this week, some sort of like, I don't know. He tried something, some sort of little attempt at making himself look younger or he something. Put a, he put a little lemon he in his hair and then laid out. Four or five wisps of old man hair still on the top of his head here in 1988. Tried to do some sun in or something, and he just looked fucking ridiculous. He did. And like he like I was just staring. It was like combed forward into like yes. bangs. He's trying to like trying to comb over, trying to bleach oh, it God. like he was fucking the new flare or something. And it's nuts because like, I was like, no, you're the dad of the group. He Arn. looks like 45 years old right Absolutely. here. Absolutely. Fairly certain he's younger than we are. Oh, sure. At this point. Yeah. Like he's like he's gotta mid, be. mid to late twenties here. Oh, for sure. Like he Not, was only like he I, never looked it. At no point like, in his life did he, he ever like fucking look it. Forty three when he had to retire. Uh, he was uh, one of those guys who just forty five his entire life. Oh, no matter the if he's twenty, time. no matter if he's sixty, the just entire always forty five. Except for this week when he tried to make himself look younger. By bleach blonde in his fucking hair. Wisps. Oh. Willow and the wisp. Ugh, just surfer Sting. He's so lighten the yeah. territory on fire. Well, it works for Sting. I'm trying to do ride it for me. those coattails. No, Arn, you need to darken that shit up a little bit. Just don't try to hide your bald. It's not a bald spot. Most of your head yeah. is fucking it's bald. It's just thin hair. Sir. Lean into your dad bod, buddy. Yeah. If anything, fluff up your chest hair some. Hell yeah. Comb that belly hair. So this isn't even what I wanted to talk about. I got oh, the real I part. Could, I couldn't get past the blonde. That's all I could think I'm gonna of this give entire you segment. The real scoop on this match. Mm-hmm. It's so important. I'm gonna open a beer here. There we go. It's open. All right. Who did he fight? Ready for it. He's Who in there he versus fight? Art Pritz. And you had a little good time with that name earlier. It's didn't a fun you? name. Art. You ready for it to get better? Artie. Okay. Art Pritz. Yeah. And this was used a lot in my childhood. <laughs> wow. Or- you see Going to the way back machine. You see, prit is the Greek word. Ooh, for fart. That's hilarious. This guy's this guy's name, name's Art Fart. Art Farts is his name in Greek. When I was at camp, my favorite activity was always arts and crafts. 
or as we used to call it, arts and farts and crafts. <laughs> we used to make drawings. Cave drawings. Which is my way of saying we were cavemen. I went to camp so long ago that I can remember saying sticks and stones may break my bones and meaning it. I went to camp so long ago that fucking Jesus Christ was my counselor and my best friend hadn't fully evolved yet. His name was Ugg and he walked on all fours. There were two epidemics when I went to camp. Head lice and the plague. The bubonic plague. Pritz. Weird. It's a fun word. You're going to yeah. use it. I'm definitely not going to remember that. You'll remember next time he comes up in a match. Oh, what's a four? I got a four here. Okay. Yeah, I do. Okay. Uh, it's the fucking Garvins versus Ryan Wagner and Steve Atkinson. Who could pay attention to that match? My question was, well, apparently you didn't, but I did. No, I did not. Uh, Ron Garvin just comes into the match just doing a fucking technical showcase of mat holds and stretch maneuvers hmm. for no reason. Good for him. Stone hands Ronnie Garvin. Again. Taking it to the mat. Who's booking this shit? And who let Garvin go out there Duffy. for 10 minutes and go into business for himself, stretching out some poor old man? Oh, there was time to fill. Just so his brother could dump the guy on his head and get a quick one, two, three. I did, I did wake up during that brain buster. Yeah, it made no sense, man. Like, Ronnie was just going These into business cardboard. for himself. And, like, just so uninteresting. And it yeah. sort of makes sense for Ronnie because, like, his character is just kind of he's cardboard and uninteresting, like a tense little mean old man. But Jimmy Garvin's whole character is yeah. that he's this, like, flamboyant rocker wild man, and he still just bores the shit out of me. Oh, him. absolutely. Like, I can't—can can, can I think of a more— boring wrestler whose gimmick was being like the flamboyant party boy like in all of the history of wrestling i don't think there is one i'm trying there's got to be somebody in that like attitude era even like dolph ziggler at least bumps all over the ring that's true yeah he's close though he's pretty he's close really at this point. close he's he's reaching jimmy garvin territory oh, from what God, i can tell he's just like the internet used to be all about that guy mm, for a minute mm, there now was even a the moment there where it seemed like maybe he could step back. up and like become something and then and he they just all kind of wanted him to be the next Shawn michaels and then he just kept doing what he was doing yeah. flipping his hair a little bit and kind of looking cocky and that was his entire character now for poor fucking drew mcintyre stuck with him mm, just like an anchor around his Scottish neck. What do you got? Another one? Uh, I got one more. My number five. Uh, five whatever. It's just None real quick. Matters. It's just uh, watching that Al Perez match against Mike Jackson. Yeah, flat no one out. Have had to. No joke. One hundred percent serious. This isn't hyperbole whatsoever. If I was booking this show, if I was in charge of this territory at this point, I would be putting Mike Jackson over Al Perez. This guy at least has some fire in the ring. He's at yeah. least got some personality, even though he looks like a stupid old man. There's something you can do with him. Tell the story that he's like an old man, yeah. just like in over his head, but trying right. for one last shot of glory before he has to retire. Al Perez, there's nothing. There's nothing to do with him. He is stone-faced, methodical, boring, nothing, no potential, Get him off the TV. Yeah. Quit giving him wins, especially over people my, like Mike Jackson. My God, is he handsome. Solid though. little weird old man worker. Yeah. You could give him like the pseudo wrestler storyline, like the movie The Wrestler, where mm -hmm. like he's been doing it for too long and like he's got an estranged family because he's just sacrificed so much of his personal life go. to wrestling. Nice little, little vignettes just, about yeah. his kids being too yeah. poor to like uh get lunches to and go they to just, school and they just want nothing to do with them because uh, he's like, just got to get one w yeah. to get that paycheck to, so they yeah. don't lose the trailer he just, he just wants to prove it to himself he wants to prove it to his kids that you know he can do this put me he can really back do in this. time in charge of 1988 nwa wrestling I'm, yeah i might i'm starting to get convinced mike jackson might be my top baby face at least drop a secondary strap on him you got 80 I, of I them i could at least build to a brief program with him and flair like give him one big title match with flair right i mean he could hang he could People hang in there would go with flair. nuts man if you're like the plucky underdog like this guy like has no business and he's made it to fucking flair al perez who's he being built towards 
Dusty, maybe? He keeps mentioning Dusty. No. I don't know. Every, that's Dusty the problem. Dusty Perez. Nobody wants everybody to see it. Everybody fucking mentions Dusty. Everybody mentions everybody. There's All right, no baby, fucking... you're going to go out here. I need you to cut this promo. Uh, mostly, though, always be talking about big dust. That's always, the number one rule. I was talking about how bad you want to get at me, but you just can't get to me. If ever there's a time when Poochie is not on the wrestling show, the other wrestlers should be asking, hey, where is Poochie? Where is Poochie? That's a, that's a meme right there. Mm. Yeah. It's a meme in the making. You Load just, up my Photoshop. You summed up all I got work of to Dusty do. Rose. I got work yeah. to do. So I got a five. Okay, let's cap it all off here. And it is literally... This scintillating episode. It cap is, it all it off. It is everything after Fanta... Or everything that's after Midnight Express versus Tony Suber and Trent Knight. Mm-hmm. Because that match ended, and I was like, okay, they got on TV. There's clearly enough time for one more thing to happen. Okay. And then the one more thing happened, and it was the Varsity Club, and I was like, all right, this is how we're going to end the show. And then Sullivan, they did their little Sullivan thing. Sullivan cut a pretty decent promo about fucking Jimmy Garvin's yeah, old lady this know, week. At least this is maybe the best sense. Sullivan promo I've seen. But like, oh, God, him in the ring made me I so mad. I had a mad. first Jimmy Garvin. I got my pita real high, and then I put it inside a... Oh. I, I got my pita real high, Not Jimmy Gavin. Kevin Sullivan's Peter. Yeah, I bet he calls it that, Yeah, too. that's definitely, like, that's, uh. the, that's the generation of men who, who called it a Peter. Yeah. <laughs> Ugh. Uh, I think I like Kevin Sullivan now just because of that. Either way, just Coming watching circle. that fucking idiot in there with the varsity club... Those two goofs in their college singlets, and then fucking they're great. Doughy, bald, blonde-haired, no pads, black man. trunks, black boots. Fucking Kevin Sullivan, big you toe fucking man. idiot. Uh, so Hard I'm like, move. okay, center of gravity, good for wrestling. And I'm like, okay, good, it's over with. He's done. Thank Turns God. out Precious's name is Patty with an I. That's mm-hmm. great. You banged her. Let's call it. You over call it Precious. I call it Patty. And then they were like. And here comes Ivan Koloff. And I'm like, no. He's not even in a feud no. with anybody right now. Why? And What's it, the point of it this? It didn't even hit me. I, th- I At first, I was thinking Nikita Koloff. And I was like, ah, oh, they're just fucking shoehorning in his return, whatever, nope. blah, blah, blah. Nope. And then I realized, like, no, this is the fucking One Russian bear. Like, of the six-man tag it. team champions. That, that never gets fucking defended. Like, just uh, wrestle in a throwaway Jesus match against Christ. a jobber for no reason. And then what's his tits cutting an interview afterwards? Paul, what, well, I can't Paul think of Jones. His name. Yeah, and he's, uh, uh, the powers of pain are receded number one. And fucking big balls, Crockett's like, they're number five, you bitch. Just ending your... They're number five, you bitch. Ending your episode on a high note, just for some reason, completely past these people, like... They can't clue into that whatsoever. No. Like, hey, maybe, don't know how wrestling maybe we works, start man. off the episode hot, and then we end it on a high note. So, like, people go away wanting more. It always just ends randomly there was something that, that should be in the middle of the show that serves no purpose. I'm telling you, I can count, because uh, we've watched, we're fucking four months in now. Too we've many. watched four months of this Too shit. Many. There was two, two fucking shows they two had right to me. that Ended the right way. Yeah. And it was their big, like, start of the year live spectacular where they were like, we don't even have time. It's chaos. Like, oh, no, wait. No, there's still something after that, I think. Probably. I think they fucked up on that Maybe one. There was so one. there's one. It's Maybe the one where one. the fucking Fantastics and the Midnight Express tore the entire set down and then they ended the show. Just, That's it. Somebody making all these TV shows, and they've been making TV shows for so many years, you think would have figured out just the basics of making a TV show at this point. But no, and they never will. Moral of the story. Tell you what, yeah. we're going to take a break. We're going to pay some bills here. And Hopefully. we're going to talk about something not too Gentile. Promotional consideration paid for by the following. Welcome to Chunkamania. Rowdy Roddy Piper eats chunky chili beef soup with a fork. Mr. Wonderful Orndorff uses a spoon. Spoon! Fork. Let's find Fork. out who rules. <laughs> New chunky chili beef with big chunks of beef. The soup that eats like a meal. Fork or spoon, it's awesome! 
I'm Captain Lou Albano talking to you about drugs. Kids, don't be afraid to say no. Anyone that asks you to use drugs is not your friend. Drugs can and will kill. Remember, don't be afraid to turn to your priest, your rabbi, your minister, your moms, your dads, your teachers, because drugs can kill. And if you do drugs, you go to hell before you die. Please. Bangerang. You think we could get Mickey Knuckles on our show? Uh, I don't know how much it would cost to air out my house afterwards if we were to get her. You in immediately air. went smell. Yeah. That's where my head was the whole damn time. Think about Mickey Knuckles, and I think about those old IWA Mid South shows we'd be to, and instantly I think about thinking to myself, I bet that girl's real smelly. Y'all don't understand. Like, like we we went to the Ring of Honor shows and shit, and everybody's. Well, not everybody, but they're still... Everybody. A, they're a business Everybody now. knows. Everybody wanting to suck that New Japan dick goes to those Ring of Honor shows because it's the closest they're going to get. Yeah, but, New uh, Japan light. It's a nice little niche yeah, they've carved for sure, themselves. Sure, sure, sure. Uh, you don't have to be a real wrestling promotion because we just have these guys in what's his, often enough that we make money. What's his nuts? Fucking carry whatever from Ring of Honor. Carry Silken. Yeah. What's former his, owner of Ring of Honor. Former owner... Jesus Christ, do you ever read any of his social media posts? Mm, I think I, uh, yeah, I think we follow him on our yeah. Baby Oil and Blow Instagram we account. Do. I see it every once in a while. It's mostly just him, like, sucking dick. And about as literate as a third grader. Oh, Good fucking I I God. I all that. I think it's mostly just, like, him posting pictures of wrestlers that have worked for him that are now successful. Being oh. like, see what I'm a part of, see what I'm a part no, of. No, read the com- read his like comments he puts there. He's like, I is am so good to be here to <laughs> use the guy. I do like you. No, a, he's a wrestling like, man. Jesus how many, Christ, How many man. illiterate people do you think have promoted wrestling throughout the years? I'm sure it's oh. more than people who could read good. That's for damn God sure. Damn, like. What do you think Dusty Rhodes' notebooks looked like? I'm sure they were a mess. No way. He wrote in Lisp. You think I so? have it on good authority. Oh, man. THs in every word he'd write down. Either way, I want... Indecipherable. M- I want Mickey Knuckles in your house. She's, is she still wrestling? Uh, she's got to be dead or wrestling, one of the two. She's got to be wrestling. We just binged it during our break, and we, we confirmed that Ian Rotten is, is still alive. alive and is still trying to promote IWA Mid-South yeah. shows. Slaver Gun came along when I was at home on one of my many, many suspensions. Many? Many. And I was stapling down uh, some uh, carpet pad. You figured, hey. And I was like, this would fucking work. <laughs> That's great. <laughs> True story. And then one day the dude, uh, what's his name? Fucking. He was Axel Rotten's partner. He got like, uh, uh, Paul E fired him like years ago. And he was in the locker room crying like a big old bitch. Like, all I've ever done for you, and I've given up my life, and I've given up my body, and I've ruined relationships, and I've done this, and I've just been there for you, and you and you going to treat me like this, you're going to fire me? What was Axel's partner's name? Ian. Him! Yeah. <laughs> he was crying, I mean, like a bitch. He was like, it's the body. I'm going to do this, the body. And Paul Lee walked up to him and turned his head around backwards. And Paul Lee did this shit, bro, and everybody in the locker room. It was like a domino effect. He said, you're fired! And Ian walked out the door crying. Mm. One day, Ian came up to me and said, Jack, you know why you stay the gun first? I said, shut the fuck up. <laughs> I said, you non-working motherfucker. I said, you, I said, you, the pro- I said, you the primary example of a motherfucker that couldn't play in the big leagues when you started your own. All right. I said, this, I said, you a prime example. And I said, shut the fuck up. Memphis, Indiana. Great Do you even know where that is? Catch your elbow on something in that Civic Center and get oh, tetanus type boy. wrestling shows. For days. Just woof. And that was 10 Yikes. years ago, back when he sort of had some buzz. Yikes. Like, I can't even imagine what the remnants of those shows are looking I like. I was going to say, days. what do you think the, uh, like the biggest crowd we ever sat with at an IWA show? A couple hundred, I think. You think? A hundred at least? I think least? for like the biggest ones he did, probably a couple hundred. Oh, Jesus. He's uh, literally... Mm-hmm. <laughs> he's from the deep south. Ramp for as, Indiana. As Justin would say. Yeah. Just north of Louisville. Ah, uh, Louisville. Yeah, Ooh. Louisville. I, he couldn't even pay me to go to Memphis, Tennessee, let alone oh, Memphis, man. Indiana. Fuck that. It's got to be right up there with like when we went to Dayton for that Dayton, Ohio show. is by far... Uh, 
the scariest town I've ever been in. You get, we saw a real life baseball Desolate. fury at a McDonald's. Desolate. We drove around that downtown for a good 45 minutes looking oh, for a business man. that was open. All so we, we could, could find get a bite to eat. was one McDonald's. And and there was a baseball fury in there with a duffel bag of Just God knows what. Desolate. Where were all the human beings? It really looked like Escape from New York. What is happening in Dayton, Ohio? Oh, man. I know a lot of you mutants. You're are, all chuds down there in yeah. Dayton? Oh, yeah. I know you're going to like independent shows, but like treat yourself and travel out of your town to another town and then never go back and then just just to see what it's like like that was the best like we had to drive a little bit to like ring of honor but then we would go to those iwa shows and those were like fucking west of o'hare like Mm. weird Mm -hmm. nobody really lives here there's just like factories and warehouses and uh man that's where we saw that the fucking sawyer family and the old man eating the hot dog weird stuff at Uh. low-end indie wrestling shows yeah you gotta old men with one tooth using them to slice open the casing of a hot dog so he could suck out its innards you're gonna do yourself a favor with this because these are stories that just transcend wrestling i'm like telling my grandkids right. about all the early 2000s shitty indie wrestling shows Any, i went to anybody i tell these stories to or just like wow like this is amazing shit you're living like a storied traveled life and it's like mm-hmm. no i'm just going to like Man stupid towns culture. watching shitty wrestling but people want to hear these stories, man. Go find these people. They're out there. Drink yeah. it in, and man. Indie wrestling shows, shitty indie wrestling shows. Do more shows on a Sunday afternoon. Yeah. You're always doing it on Saturday nights. No. Real per- people have shit to do on Saturday right. nights. Yeah. They want to ease into a few more of these yeah. Sunday afternoon like shows. A three, that, four o'clock bell time. Yeah, maybe I could carve a couple hours out of my afternoon to go to this thing. Yeah. That'd be nice. You're doing yourself no favor asking people to give up their weekend nights for your fucking garbage wrestling. So you're hearing this on a Thursday. If you're anywhere near Louisville uh, this weekend, Ian Rotten, the, the IWA story. Mid-South. Moral of the story. They got the Ted Petty Invitational That's right. going. They're still doing it. I remember They're like... still exploiting their friend's death for I money. I remember like the second Ted Petty and that was... That was God, that was late 90s I like, feel like. A long time ago. So who fucking knows what one they're on now. How much horse meat still left on that corpse that they're beating. For like fucking zero dollars, you can go see fucking Impact Wrestling Stars, OVE, uh, Jimmy Jacobs, the zombie princess, which I don't Mm -hmm. fucking get. I don't like any of that shit. Oh, uh, that's my sensibilities uh, are not in line with calling the, yourself a princess. Whatever the fuck he's doing, shame on all you for getting it over. I support it. Go back to uh, just being in love with Lacey and writing love songs well, that for her. That was prime Jimmy J. That was, no, oh, uh, man. There's no arguing that. Put that guy on the map. And if you ain't familiar. I feel like there's nothing to make it right next matter than calling yourself a princess, though. I support it. That's Whole hog. Cheeky. But he's like a zombie, too, and people like zombies. Not me. Shit or get off the pot, fucking loser. Not since Return of the Living Dead. You can take all this new zombie crap, throw it in the toilet, poop on it. Is that flush the one it. where... Uh, flush it, motherfucker. Uh, What's-her-face gets naked in the graveyard? By Mia Quigley, yeah. There we go. They had to staple that fake... Because uh, she was bald. She on had her bald pussy. Yeah, she showed up with a bald pussy. And the director pussy and, and the producer like, the fuck is that? That wasn't quite That's a disgusting. thing yet in the culture, so everybody was real wigged out by it. Uh, wigged out. Fun I like stories. what you did there. Fun stories. Yeah. You ever fantasize about being killed? Never. Do you ever wonder about all the different ways of dying, you know, violently, and wonder, like, what would be the most horrible way to die? Try not to think about dying too much. Mm. Well, for me, the worst way would be for a bunch of old men to get around me and start fighting and eating me alive. I see. First, they would tear off my clothes. Let's get some light over here. Crash is taking off her clothes again. See, there was a time, peoples, when bald pussies really scared people. Mm Mm-hmm. And we need to go back to those times, because quite frankly, I I don't get it. Give me a bush. Yeah. Something I could get lost in. Yeah. want to do some exploring. 
That's what yeah. I'm in here for. I like it when it trickles down to the thigh. That inner <laughs> thigh. Yeah. That's, that was, yeah. yeah let's bleep that out. You just, and Ronald Reagan both. Burn that. Just On that trickle down platform. That. Let's just dump that. Uh, speaking let's of dumps. Get into our three count. Speaking of dumps. We wasted enough of this there's a already wasted day of mine. Big dump last night. A uh, big dump called Hell in a Cell. Uh, famously, I didn't watch it. Famously. Heard the cell was red, though. I did. Uh, Matt watched it. He's not piping up much about what happened, so I'm going to guess it nothing. was fucking nothing. Nothing. Literally nothing happened. So let's uh, let's do a three count Ooh, here. Becky Lynch let's, won the strap. Let's imagine. I fucking care less about those women's let's wrestlers. Let's imagine some fake wrestling scenarios wherein things did happen. Uh, Hell in the Cell, what was it created? 96, 97, somewhere around there? Is... Oh, this was the 20th anniversary, 98. Oh, with, wow, uh, all the fucking... way in 98? Well, no, this was Mankind Undertaker. Oh, that was not the that. first. So I'm going to say Bad Probably Blood, 96. 90- 97 was probably uh, Shawn Michaels, Undertaker, first Hell in a Cell match. Probably 96, because they had a little more uh, patience back then about holding off. There you go. Either way, uh, we're well into the 90s before the Hell in a Cell became a thing, and it's become one of the most iconic structures, one of the most iconic matches in wrestling, even though they do everything they can to drive it into the ground and make it meaningless these days. Second only to the Elimination Chamber. So back in the day, back in the 1980s, all we really had was a simple cage match to blow off these big feuds, and that was a big deal back then, but... My question that I'm throwing out there for this week's three count is, what if the Hell in the Cell existed in the 1980s? What if it didn't take so long for it to come around? What if oh, they built a big son. old demonic structure? Which famous feuds from the 1980s do you think could have benefited for being blown off inside the cell? What would have worked? Who do you want in there? Who do you want to see work the cell? Uh, I got some ideas. I came up with some fantasy scenarios that I think Nate, would have been real good. Nate, I did as well. Uh, you got three and I got three. Yeah. Was, this is going to be a good time. I'm looking, this is the yeah, highlight of the night for me. After this, three take some cold medicine. Three is my favorite number. Slip into a stupor. That would be cool. Just stay out of the bathtub. That's how Dolores from the, the Cranberries died. She's dead? Zombie. Um, yeah, like a year ago. Oh, wow. Come on, man. Uh, my first one that I want to put on there. Mm-hmm. Horsemen had to show up somewhere. Absolutely. Because horsemen love to interfere. And generally, whoever they were feuding with, that guy had people that were going to combat the horsemen. Watching watching his back. What a better way. Quite frankly, it was Dusty. Dusty made everybody watch his back. To keep everybody out and to keep two people in. And maybe, you know, action spills out on side. Mm-hmm. And you said one of the names. So I'm going to give it to the 19, was that 86, 85, Gathering of the Juggalos, mm, Dusty versus Flair. Okay. You what? You would have put that bitch it in was a hell a on a cell? bloodbath of a card anyways. Everybody got juice on both sides in every match. Yeah. Why not end it with a fucking hell in a cell match? Yeah, you had that bit. I debated on putting Tully and uh, fucking Magnum Ooh, in here. famous I Quit cage match. It would have made sense, but you could have done... I didn't like that they had two cage matches yeah. here, so you could have had them in the also, cage. Also, that one was badass enough anyways. Yeah. Like, it had its own thing it going on. It had its own thing. So you could have just had... Dusty and Flair in mm-hmm. the Hell in a Cell mm-hmm. to keep everybody else out. You could have had all that wild action spilling out around the cage, out around the cage, people beating each other's asses. You don't need any big spots in this one. This could just be the Triple H Diesel of the uh, you know Ouch. Hell in a Cells. Would be a little bit more entertaining than well, that. Well, it's going to be more entertaining than that. But just you know, those two idiots grinding their faces against. Mm-hmm. Cage That's what I'm picturing. Banging their heads into shit and just bleeding fucking buckets of blood for no reason. Maybe like a nice little twist to the Hell in the Cell format. You take that loaded cowboy boot of Dusty Rhodes and you hang Ooh. it from the top of the cell. Ooh. Like, uh, who's going to get up there and they're going to get that boot? I'm sorry. The famous boot that they built the entire buildup of that match around. I'm sorry. Just was, talking about that boot for six months. Is Vince Russo booking this match in the 80s? Could be. We're taking structures we're put from the it, 90s back there. Why don't we take bookers back bro, there? Bro, we're going to put it in a hell in a cell, bro. And then we're going to put your boot on a pole in the corner, bro. And then kill it, dogs, all the way to the side dogs, of the ring. Dogs, dogs all around the ring and side just of the cell, bro. Just humping each other and bro. shitting, dude. It's, it's just fucking humping and shitting. 
Vince Russo is a moron. He's pretty cool. But Dusty and Flair inside the cage would have worked wonders. I was right there on the same page as you there. Uh, I was like, who, the horsemen, if there was hell in the cells yeah. back in the 80s, the horsemen are the people who would have thrived in it. So my number three, my idea is... I'm just getting rid of war games entirely. Oh, yeah? I'm having war games matches happen inside the Hell in the Cell. Because war games was a cool fucking visual. Yeah. But the matches never worked out as good as the visual. Like the whole, like, wait a minute, get in the ring. Wait a minute, get in the ring. A, the format was just like uh, the coin flip, and the bad guys were always going to win, and they were always going to have the advantage through it. It smelled way too NWA, WCW. Uh It just set up for every War Games match to be the exact same match over and over again. B, the two rings looked cool, but it was awkward, like getting from one to the next more often than not. Yeah. B, the top of the cage, it's cool having an enclosed cage, but it was so low that like nobody could do anything. Like nobody could do anything off the top rope. People are always hitting it. I'm saying just take all these teams... Just Dusty and his friends, Dusty, the Road yeah. Warriors, Nikita, throw them in there, throw the horsemen in there, in the hell in the cell, and just have tornado tag rules, yeah. all these guys crazy, beating the shit out of each other, and it would have made for actually better matches yeah. than the War Games matches ended up being, and the visual would have been just as cool. The hell in the cell looks just as cool as the War Games yeah. setup. You could have done it. So yeah, my idea, scrap War Games. It's always you think it's gonna be fun, but then it's always a little bit awkward. Don't tell H. Yeah, H has brought it back. Don't he's tell a real H. fucking NWA fanboy. I got a break. I'm doing jerk off motion with my hands right now. Right, you Triple H, and then ooh, I just flung some the, jizz at Steph. You're the game. You're the game boy. Right big Steph. You're the game boy. That's my favorite British Bulldog promo. <laughs> I, I, that's a whole new three count. I, you're I the. You're the king, Take a solid boy. week to try and whittle down all my oh, favorite British Bulldog promos. I got a number two. Mm-hmm. Uh, this match was one of the bloodiest, just fucking two guys hating each other, trying to kill each other in the ring at a very early time, and it mm-hmm. was with a gimmick. Mm-hmm. But it could have been better with this gimmick that we call Hell in the Cell. And I'm taking the whole fucking... I don't care if it's the red cell i don't care if it's the silver cell i'm taking it Mm -hmm. and the way way back to the machine to 1983 starcade i'm putting piper i'm putting greg the hammer valentine in the hell in a cell they already had a very very bloody entertaining what was it a bull rope match no the dog collar collar match yeah i remember them attached to each other and they're just Fucking let those uh, guys play with the hell in a cell. Piper's ear bleeding uncontrollably. Oh, that was good like stuff. Who who blades their ear? They made just uh, fucking magic at the time with just a dog collar match. With if you tried to do that nowadays, people dog collar shit matches all over always that. suck. Yeah, that dog one's collar, great. And I love it. Rope, whatever. I don't like, know if I can think of another single one I've ever seen no. where I'm like, oh, that was a real good match. Those two guys understood it. And if you would have given them like a month's notice and been like, we're going to put you in this giant fucking cage, mm-hmm. like figure out what you want to do with it. I don't know. I guess uh, hopefully they would have let them know about it because pretty famously they put Hogan and Piper in that Hell in the Cell ripoff cage when they were old men and they had no idea what to do with the structure and were yeah. kind of taken aback that it wasn't yeah, a normal that's, cage. That's and it fair. was one of the worst matches that's, anyone's ever seen. Yeah, that's fair. That's really fair. But young uh, Piper though, he young had, Piper though, he would have at he least, had the wherewithal to do something with he, it. He would have at least taken that like get to the outside and that Shawn Michaels halfway up the cage mm-hmm. off to the announcer mm-hmm. table bump, bump. Like Piper would have been good for that. Yeah, for sure. Yeah, and in nineteen eighty three, a lot of Greg Valentine taking shots to the head into the cage and doing some like punch. Oh jump, yeah. Like, I'm trying to box yeah. you, but I'm out on my feet type stuff. All right. just bleeding all down his face. You could have done a lot of like uh, Piper throwing uh, Valentine into the, the hard posts where the mm. chain link meets, you know? Not the fence part, but like Got the post real part. Real you know? CTE brewing there yeah. back in the yeah. 80s. We didn't know that was a thing. Just hit his head in there real the hard. Same, it's man. fine. It the so I think that one uh, would have worked out. It would have been a legendary match. People still talk about that Starcade match, but if it was in Hell in a Cell, I mean, like, even the casuals would know about it. Yep. My number two, 
I was on a similar page with you again. I was thinking bloody feuds. Yeah. They were already bloody and amazing. How do you take them to the next level? I picked what was probably the bloodiest, most brutal feud of the 1980s, in my opinion. Uh, and that's Jerry Lawler versus Terry Funk. Ooh. These guys, they had... 60 minute draws they had texas death matches they had empty arena matches i think they very famously uh famously among virgins with no life uh were the first guys to break dave melcher's star rating Ooh. used to do it on, on like yeah. four stars i think one of their matches was the first five star match because it was so good so brutal just Knocking each other in the next week, slopping blood all over the front row. They're punching each other's bloody heads so hard. Don't you put forget, these guys. Don't forget, in the we got Dave Meltzer's first eight star. You for put our these podcast. guys hell in the cell in Memphis, Tennessee. Oh Fucking, shit! Fucking that crowd is going to be rabid, insane. They might tear that cell down. Yeah, you could have sold the Coliseum out with. You that. want to talk about taking that Shawn Michaels bump off the side? You know Terry Funk's the finding a way gonna. to take that Shawn Michaels bump. You know Jerry Lawler wants to end the match by doing a pile driver on top of the cell. Yeah. Jerry Lawler, pile driver on top of the cell. That's an iconic image that would have just lasted forever. That would have been like the 1980s image of what fucking pro wrestling is if we could have got those guys a fucking I'm hell imagining, the cell back then. I'm imagining... Uh, Funker trying to get away from Lawler. Oh, he's like, God damn it, Jerry! He's halfway up the cage and like... Lawler starts whacking him with like a broom or something to get him down, oh, and yeah, that's when he falls go. backwards into the table. And then, like, who's going to Mama just sweeps him off with a broom. And there's, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, that was a movie. I got a final one. Okay, number one. And I had to take it there, and I had to bring it back to where it was created. Back to the E. Yeah, see, that's a thing. Like, We've been doing a lot of Southern wrestling because I feel like yeah. the Hell in the Cell better fit for Southern wrestling right. than it is the WWF. Sure. They would have really fucking done some gross ass shit. In they it. didn't do the blood feuds like the mm-hmm. Southerns did, mm-hmm. uh, but they did do the spectacle. Yeah, that's for sure. And they knew how to draw shit out, and they knew how to make you want it, and they knew how to make you pay for it. How that's why you're it? still paying for how it. How does it feel? Well, and I was trying are. to think, oh, you know Hogan's got to be in it. Oh, 1980s WWF match? Hell yeah. You ain't, you ain't having one of those without Hogan sticking his nose in there. He smells money, brother. And I was kicking around giant for brother. forever, but brother. I just eh, it wasn't enough for me. Andre not mobile enough during and the then, era to do anything cool inside the Hell in the Cell, I don't think. I finally settled on the year-long drought. That turned into WrestleMania Five. Mega Powers oh, explode. Very strong pick. Very got, strong. Heated feud. Personal feud. Macho willing to bump. Mm-hmm. I don't know if he's going to be taking crazy like go through a table bumps. Nah. But he's going to be banging off the cage. I think and shit. maybe we could get a elbow drop from the top rope to the apron. Yeah, sure. He, I don't remember him ever doing that in the eighties. Hell in a yeah. Cell might have been a, a nice Good time to yeah. bust that out. Yeah, but Hogan, to all of his faults, wasn't afraid to show color. Oh no, Hogan! Whenever he was in a cage, you could guarantee he's gonna bleed like a motherfucker. So you could have done a lot. They do a lot of cheating in these matches. You could have had plenty of macho getting chairs out from underneath mm-hmm, the ring, mm-hmm. taking the easy way out on Hogan, mm-hmm. wearing him down with chairs. And then getting him outside and just grinding his head into that chain link fence. Hogan's bleeding. Hogan's everywhere. bleeding. The he starts doing that. The <laughs> fucking kids are just <laughs> worried, Stuff. senseless. Just blowing blood and sweat all yeah. over the place and spittle. And, you know, fucking Hogan can hulk up and then just throw macho back first into the cage a couple times, uh, watch him bounce. Slingshot him off the it. cage into the big boot. Yeah. He, did, Macho would do it, man. I think uh, he was a real workhorse back there in this era. I think you could have made your spectacle that was gigantic to begin with mm-hmm. even bigger. He is a good way to get these guys out of the cage if you're going there. You got Elizabeth ringside. At one point, she's begging. Yeah. Oh, we got to get him out of here. We got to get him out of here. Yeah. She slaps the ref she just to get the key or yeah, whatever the one of the refs to yeah. open it up so she can go in there and stop them. And yeah. then these guys take that to fight to the outside. Oh, yeah, you could totally do that. They're both knocked out, just laying there mm-hmm. on the ground. Mm-hmm. No one's getting up, and Elizabeth is like, 
open the fucking door. Like we got to save these people. Inherent drama. Oh yeah. In this match. <sighs> what a work, man. One, two, three. This is all the way. I've been lockstep with you, having very similar ideas. Yeah. I also thought. Who's going to be able to make the most money in the Hell in a Cell? It's going to be Hulk, Hulk Hogan. Hogan. It's going to be the Hulkster, man. And you know that it, I wanted to get a couple of big, larger-than-life, over-the-top guys in there. Because like yeah. you said, we're not going to get any crazy shit no. in the WWE no. cage it's match. It's going to be brutality. So I was like, who is an over-the-top, just big body, who like slamming into that cage next to Hogan's big body slamming into that cage is going to look good. It's going to... Just look impressive. Yeah, can still move. Announcers going to be talking about, oh, I think the whole cell just shifted six inches to the left on that one. Blah, blah, blah. Nice. And I came up with a guy who I think could have really, really uh, benefited from having a Hell in a Cell match with Hulk Hogan, and that is the Earthquake. Ooh, Johnny Tenta. That John Tenta... Hulk Hogan feud in 1990, NBA Jam rule still counts as 80s. Oh, wow. Started off hot as fuck with the earthquake squashing Hogan, yeah. injuring him, sending him away. The first time Hogan was ever like hurt to the point where he Off couldn't TV. keep fighting and had to go away, it seemed like a big, big deal. Yeah. And then they come back, and the only singles match they have is a 1990 SummerSlam singles match that ends in a count out. And then their feud kind of peters out when they yeah. just captain teams against each other at Survivor Series. Yeah. And I feel like this feud started off so hot, but they never had the big definitive singles match that would have, like, A, made this one of the big Hogan feuds that people remember, and B, made Earthquake sort of a solid, legendary main right. eventer in a way that he never quite got to. I'm saying you draw this all the way out to WrestleMania 7, yeah. have like them eliminate each other in the Rumble because they're still just so mad at each other. Yeah. They fucking ruin both their chances at the title shot. You don't do Slaughter versus Hogan, which nobody wanted to see. Uh, then you just do Hogan, Earthquake, Inside Hell in the Cell, make it just like a blood feud that's lasted the whole fucking year. Like, first person ever really hurt Hogan. You could First person who's lasted this long without Hogan get a clean win on him. You could have had just like the first 10 to 15 minutes be Earthquake just beating Hogan mm, pillar mm-hmm, to post, mm-hmm. just dragging him on the ring, just running, just, yeah. just like leaning him against the cage and then yeah. running real fast and squashing him uh, in between his big belly and in the, the cage. crowd just being like, Hogan's got no way to get out of this. He's mm-hmm, literally going to mm-hmm. die in there. And then just have Hogan do like two to three minutes of offense to win the match. I'm picturing some people would have been some happy stuff with the steel steps. Maybe like Earthquake yeah. puts the steps on top of Hogan and then butt squishes the steps. Yeah, just, just puts him in the little Hogan like a, a little bug. triangular cutout part just there, yeah. squishing him like a bug. Yeah. I think this would have solidified Earthquake as one of Hogan's best opponents, which I think he should have been. And they kind of dropped yeah. the ball on that feud. You holsters up there, man. You know darn well, and I know darn well that the Hulksters never let down a person in his life. Whenever any of us needed him, the Hulk's always been there. You felt the charisma, you felt the warmth, you felt the electricity that's Hulkamania. He's always been there. Well, now's the time for us to give back to him what he's given to us all these years. That warmth, that love, that charisma, give it back to him. Put the smile back on his face. Let him know. I'm, I'm, I'm asking you, please, let the man know how you feel about him. Let him know that you care. <clears throat> I concur with, with Tugboat. There's ever a time that Hulk Hogan needs your help. It's now. Over the years, I developed a friendship with the Hulkster. I'm proud to say that, that he considered me a friend of his a lot of a lot of great years please write to him let's let's go to the graphic please write to Hulk Hogan at this address I can't do this well there you have it in a nutshell folks the Hulks are not faring too well at this particular point in time not hard to understand why either what's the exact extent of his injuries well, you know, he, t- he took that tremendous shot with that steel chair in the back and it tore up that subscapularis area pretty well. And then all those earthquakes on his chest just crushed his ribs, 
some torn intercostal cartilage, some muscles torn at points of origin, points of insertion. A lot of damage was done, but nothing brain that won't heal. The thing that I'm worried about is the mental aspect of the hoax. Well, you will agree with me on this, though. When a man like Earthquake works you over like he did Hulk Hogan, it's very hard to come back ever again 100%. If you do come back, you will admit that. Unfortunately, I, I tend to agree with you, yes. Services are at four. Uh, th that's not exactly true at all, folks. You know, you know the, the hoaxer is a very unique individual and has done some very positive things, some things that no other mere mortal has ever done. In my opinion, in the world of professional wrestling. and from just the scuttlebutt I hear in the dressing rooms, Hulkamania is dead. Well, it's over. Ah, what could have been, man? If only we had Hells in the Cellses back before we really had Hells in the Cellses. And Vince Russo to come with us. And Vince Russo to hang Dino Bravo in a cage outside the cage. Yeah. I don't even know what the stipulation would be, but Doesn't it'd be matter. a good time. We'll figure it out. We'll figure it out when we get there, man. Fix it in post. Yeah. Where are we going next week, my man? Next week, we're back up north to primetime wrestling. Okay. That April that 11th, good, huh? 1988 episode. For now, we'll stick with the pattern until we reach another one of those points where, you know. We've had enough. We we've had enough, and then we I'll come up with out. something goofy and new for us to we do, like out. I do here on this podcast, this wrestling podcast, as you know as Baby Oil and Blow.